And what we want to do here is we want to create different types of greeters. And uh, we want to create one greeter that says, uh, hello, that'll be like an American greeter. Then we'll have like an Australian greeter who will say good day instead. And we said that one way we could do this is we could use anonymous inner class. And let's just review that briefly. We could go greeting. And then once we have this object, we could call the object and make it do its thing by just saying, Australia, I'm oh, sorry, this should say US greeter. Uh, when we have the US greeting here like this, and then we could just go uh, uh, perform like that. And so I've got this interface here, which has only a single abstract method. This used to be called a SAM interface because it was a single abstract method, but now it's called a functional interface only one method and let's just run this puppy and you can see i'm getting my hello right here and so just as a reminder of everything that's happening i am using this interface as a template to create an anonymous inner class uh, so here is an anonymous inner class it is a type greeting now this syntax here it creates a brand new class that it basically derives from the greeting interface and then it puts in here the method that the greeting interface requires it then creates an object of that class that anonymous class and that object here is called us greeting and then i'm calling the perform method right here what i'd like you to do right underneath this just to get started for today is create a similar one that does an Australian greeting and then have the Australian greeter also called perform down here and then run the entire thing so that the US greeting of hello and the Australian greeting of good day follow one after the other. Please do that now. Okay, Mr. Basu, sir, how are you coming along with your Australian greeter? Okay, and then we have this weird semicolon here, which I always forget. And then what do we need to do here, sir? Okay, so not too hard. You agree, right? All right, so let's just run this quick one time, make sure it all works. So you can see they both print here. Now, what we're doing is we are basically creating these classes and objects so that we can perform slightly different functionality. And the overhead here is fairly extreme because we have to create another class, then we have to create an object of that class. We have to create an instance of that class right here. You can see instance of that class. And then we can finally get it to do the, what it, we want it to do. So what happens now is when we move over to the Lambda expressions, this whole thing collapses into just a tiny bit of code. And that's really what we want. Now, we're gonna keep this interface because we're gonna still continue to use that as a template. But now we're going to refer to this as a functional interface. So we're going to use a functional solution. A functional solution in Java means using a Lambda expression. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to shorten it up by using a Lambda expression. So now I'm going to say greeting. We're still going to use uh, something of this type. I'll just call it uh, US greeting. And what I'm going to say here is that this thing this thing is going to be a lambda expression, and it's just going to be like this. Like that. And you can see now that there are no uh, error messages here from the compiler, so that's really all I need to do to use this interface to create an object, right? and specify the functionality that I want. Now, the advantage of this now is that I can now do the same thing. And I'm gonna run this for you. And you can see it works exactly the same way. You go ahead and put the Australian one in. Okay, so now you can see I've got my two greeting objects here and I've got my perform calls and I can still have it work exactly the same way as before. 
Notice how much shorter the code is now. And notice that it's much easier to read. Now, we have to go over the pluses and minuses of using this functional approach. First of all, how does the greeter, uh, how does this greeting lambda expression know that this is the method that I want to replace? What if there are multiple methods here that are abstract in this interface? How would it know which interface, how, how would it know which method to replace? Miss Mila. So let's say I had this here. Um, let's say I had void perform two like that, right? Now look over here. Okay. Look over here. So you can see now it 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 doesn't know what to do. It look, these things have now lit up with red red marks here. And what I want to know is what's the source of the confusion? Look, I'm calling perform here, but it, for some reason the error is up here. Uh, even before I get down to the perform, what's the issue? See if you can dis discuss this with the person sitting next to you and figure out what the problem is here. Uh, so let me put put it to you this way. Let's say I turn these off completely. You can see this error is right here. I didn't implement perform two, but how does it know which one I'm implementing? Mr. Schulson? Okay, so the compiler doesn't know which method I'm trying to replace here. So one of the things you need to understand here is that when you have a functional interface and you want to use lambdas, you have to have an interface that has exactly one abstract method. In other words, a functional interface, see it says right here, only one method. So if you have multiple abstract methods, it's not a functional interface anymore. What kind of interface is it? Okay, so zero abstract methods is marker interface. One abstract method is functional interface, and multiple abstract methods is normal. It, it would, sir, but the, the restrictions on functional interfaces are just more significant. We don't want to run into other problems down the road with complications, so they've made it very, very simple. When you want to use an interface to create a lambda expression, that interface has to have exactly one abstract method. You're actually allowed to have other things in here called default methods, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but basically, you can only have one abstract method here. And the reason you want that rule there is so that when you write the lambda expression, there's never any ambiguity about which expression you're writing the, the method for because there's only one method that you're referring to. And here you can clearly see at, that this is the perform method here because it is the only abstract method inside the greeting interface. So here you can see that this method, this lambda expression, must be attached to this method. So important rule now, functional interfaces can only have one method. I'll take your questions later. So now the next question is, what if this interface was in a separate file? I'm going to move it to a separate file now. So I'm going to go source new Java class. I'm going to say it's an interface. And I'm going to just move this greeting interface to there. And I'm going to just go. Um, like that, right? And now I have this interface. I'm going to get rid of it from here. You see it still works, right? No reason why for it not to work. You can see it still works, right? Now, let's go back to this greet now, which is now in a separate class, this greeting interface. Imagine, if you will, that you wrote this code. This greeting interface was used for a bunch of other things. Everything was working fine. And then somebody like did an improvement and wanted to do one more round on the project and they came along and they didn't realize that this thing was being used to generate lambdas and they just came along and then they added some other interface here, some other uh, abstract method here like this. Like that, thinking that, uh, you know, no big deal. I'll just add to the interface. We'll make the interface more fancy. Now look what's going to happen to your code back here. You can see that your code is going to break. You see that, right? So someone has added legitimate Java to an existing interface and it's caused you to break your code here because you were depending on the fact that that interface, that would remain a functional interface. But now you see it's not a functional interface anymore because you've added, you've added a second method here. So we can use this special keyword to tell the readers and the potential writers we can use this keyword functional interface here 
to tell the readers and future writers that we do not want any more methods added and we don't want this method subtracted from this interface because it's important that this interface be kept with only one abstract method. So this is optional, but it's really useful. It's similar to like how add override is optional, but really useful. Uh, so Ben is asking, should we put it in its own file or put it in the same class? The answer is neither. We, we rarely do either of these things because I have been hiding from you that most of these functional interfaces are already built into Java. They're built into the library that was created in Java version eight. We're gonna talk about that library next class where I will show you that there are literally hundreds of these interfaces that have been built in and you're strongly encouraged to reuse those interfaces instead of creating your own. You can create your own if you want and if you do create your own, you're probably better off putting them in the same file as the file that you're using it in. But the reason you want to use the library ones is that the reader is probably used to seeing the library ones and they are the ones that are already familiar to them. So the library interfaces are the ones that are going to be the most useful to us. Why would we need so many library interfaces? It's because we want to have all different kinds of parameter lists on the methods and return types and things like that. That's why there's so many that are needed. But you can see here, look how simple this is. Now, I have to give you a word of warning. Uh, we had used previously a uh, anonymous inner class to implement this same exact functionality. And when I first learned about lambdas, I came to the mistaken conclusion that using an anonymous inner class versus a lambda were exactly the same thing. And that basically one was just a shorter syntax of the other. That was my expectation. Furthermore, there was a erroneous video on YouTube where the author claimed that this was exactly correct. In other words, that by simply clicking a button, you could change from the anonymous inner class over to the Lambda expression, but they were inside compiled identically the same. Uh, it turns out that's not the case. Um, in an early version of Eclipse, by the way, there actually used to be a button here, right here, you could click on and you could take this and translate it to anonymous inner class. You click the button again, it would translate it back to a Lambda. And so these things all kind of reinforced in my mind incorrectly, as it turned out that the two are identical. It just looks different. It turns out that the use of the this pointer and some other things are not the same, whether you do it this way or whether you use it for the anonymous inner class. To talk about that and prove to you that the two are different in a future class, I'm not gonna get into that today. The only thing I'm gonna tell you today is just take my word for it, they're not identical. They're not identical. If you compile one versus the other, the compiled code looks completely different for the two. Okay, so that is in a nutshell, my little example for you on lambdas.